best experience that I missed was was a conversation I had with David Gray. David Gray is a biologist. He has a PhD, stuff like that. He's very well. Uh, he's very. He has lots of knowledge about the Inuit up north and about the animals that live there. And he said that the um, that the animals have different migration patterns from, say, about 100, 200 years ago. And for me to to say that, or for me to hear that, I just have like couple things to say. One of them being is we have to look at our planet as a whole and try to fix global warming, try to fix pollution, try to make things not, well, try to make things reusable instead of just throwing it out, throwing it away. Uh, because up in, up north, the Inuit faced, faces like many different challenges. Since the hunting patterns have changed, uh, they rely on on importing goods on say like a, a can of Pepsi. Pepsi here is about a dollar in Ontario. Um, up north in Nunavut, Resolute Bay, Arctic Bay, it's about twelve dollars for one. So it's it's pretty hard to survive up there with the different migration patterns and the animals not really knowing what to do. So I was just thinking that um, that if people could start reusing stuff, stop using the uh, gases, and try to live like not pollution, like with no pollution or anything, then the planet could actually uh, survive. Because right now we have about 18 months before sea levels start rising rapidly, as opposed to about 70 years, like what most scientists thought. So, is there any kind of Specifically, one thing he said in that interview that really stuck with you and just really fits the theme of what you're saying with understanding sea levels are going to be rising and the animal migration patterns are changing, right? Is there any one thing he said that really stuck with you from the interview? I would say the level of the level of Like the level of education, the level of uh, poverty of North and Nunavut, that's what stuck me the most. Because if we go on a scale, uh, Canadian, an average Canadian's up here, and then Mi'kmaq are out here, but then we go up north, Inuit are down here. So that's what pretty much stuck with me. The education system up there is it's not the best. Their shelters are not the greatest. Uh, getting food and water is really hard for them. However, it should change within the next year because I personally went to Trudeau and, and he signed a, uh, a land agreement along with a few other things. So the Inuit will have full control over over the, their waters, but Canada will still own it. But they would just say like, no, this this oil, this oil refinery is not going here, or this mine is not going here. So, uh, if you can do me a favor, just kind of describe to me like how doing this interview and being able to talk with. Talk with um, your interview subjects, how it just kind of affected you to take personal action. All right, it helped me take personal action because upon seeing it from my 
for myself, like if you hear if you hear about something, you don't think much of it. But if you actually see it for your own eyes, it has a bigger impact on you. So it makes you want to help uh, other people. So for me, uh, there was a child donations, well, a child's home for children who have left, like got abandoned. So they grow up there, they get basic education, they get uh, food, clothes, water, except uh, the problem is getting the money there because most people go there for the attraction, which is trying to climb up the big mountain, but they don't really stop by. So for me, I stopped by and I, I donated about 200 US to the children's home, and that's, that's worth a fortune up there. So just, just getting to experience yourself will have a bigger impact, and if more people are able to uh, pass on what they've seen to other people, I believe it could make a huge impact on the world.